Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you very much to Bill Donahue and Anthony Monta in the Nanovic Institute for inviting me to give this introduction. And also many thanks to Ricky Herbst here at the DPAC for making this screening tonight possible. As we gather here tonight in the Browning Cinema to watch Simon Verhoeven's comedy, Welcome to Germany, Germany finds itself in some troubling times. After the murder of a 35-year-old German citizen in Chemnitz roughly three weeks ago, for which a 22-year-old Iraqi citizen and a Syrian refugee are wanted, right-wing extremists have responded with violent rallies and calls for harming foreigners. These stories of the Chemnitz riots were barely two weeks old when last weekend new protest marches occurred in the small town of Kürten in former East Germany after the death of a 22-year-old German. Right-wing populists have called for violence against foreigners and they aggressively have been criticizing Angela Merkel's open door policy. Merkel herself, on the other hand, has made it clear that she and her government will not stand for a Germany that targets minorities based on their heritage, ethnicity, or religious beliefs. However, especially in former East Germany, the far right has gained more and more traction in recent years. For example, the Alternative for Germany party in recent polls has been the third strongest party nationwide, only trailing the Social Democrats by four percentage points. And without sounding too alarmist, I believe it is safe to say that these right-wing populists and nativists are threatening the very fabric of European unity and integration that many of us probably had been taking for granted as the status quo. When he started work on Welcome to Germany in early 2015, Simon Verhoeven, the director of tonight's film, had rather modest ambitions in that he wanted to produce a movie that portrays the ups and downs of an upper middle class family from Bavaria through the lens of their relationship with Diallo, a refugee from Nigeria whom they adopt into their family. Verhoeven wanted to investigate the question of what can we learn about the importance of the traditional nuclear family in Germany through the family's members' interactions with someone from a completely different cultural background. What Verhoeven could not have foreseen in early 2015, however, was how the discourse on refugee migration would change throughout that same year in Germany. By the end of 2015, Germany had accepted more than 800,000 refugees from different nations, with more than 150,000 coming from Syria alone. On the one hand, there was a strong support for the government's open door politics, but on the other hand, nationalists from the very beginning expressed the fear that the very core of German cultural norms would be under threat by the increased number of non-Western refugees. In this context, then, Verhoeven's film about the nuclear family I would like to suggest, can very much be understood as a metaphor or commentary on Germany writ large at that moment in time. This is already somewhat obvious when we compare the original German title of the film with the English title. The German, Willkommen bei den Hartmanns, Welcome to the Hartmann family, embodies the intersection of the personal realm with the political realm quite pointedly. As you will see throughout the movie, the problems that the family is dealing with have really nothing to do with the presence of Diallo, the refugee they adopt. However, Diallo's presence in and his life story forced the family to address the tensions that had structured their own family life for decades. If we read this as a metaphor for Germany, the film suggests that the real crisis of the so-called refugee crisis is very much a German identity crisis. When forced to deal with the integration of foreigners, Germans are asked to evaluate what it can mean to be German. How complicated and even painful this process of self-reflection can be, can be seen in the story of the Hartmann family. They have to confront decade-old tensions, and this confrontation threatens the artificially happy world they had created for themselves. Analogously, when Germany in 2015 had to negotiate how to integrate hundreds of thousands of refugees from all over the world, Germans were confronted with their own troubled history in the process of self-reflectively pondering their own national identity. And in many cases, we have seen a refusal to, deal, to do this work of dealing with the past, which has led to the terrible violence against foreigners we have been witnessing recently. If we look at the English title for the film now, Welcome to Germany, another important level of the movie's critical work becomes clear. 
while the effort of providing asylum for hundreds of thousands of refugees is of course in and of itself very political, the film also shows that real integration must happen on a more personal level. The feel-good ending of the movie, and no worries, I won't give any spoilers, might not be a true reflection of the often grueling process of getting asylum in Germany. I believe, however, that the film leaves us with a very valuable message. In the end, a society can only embrace its own diversity if people on a very personal level respect and care for each other. Welcome to Germany deals with this topic from a comedic point of view. The film's message, however, is to be taken quite seriously, especially in this day and age where the violence of right-wing extremists threatens the very integrity of a Germany and a Europe that is built on inclusivity and care for one's neighbors. So this is all I wanted to share with you tonight, but before we start, I also wanted to point out that on October 4, we have another great movie in the Nanovic film series called Western that deals with a, a crew of German construction workers that moves to rural Bulgaria to build a pipeline, and it sort of shows the tension of the European Union imposing these infrastructure projects on a community that really doesn't know about it and doesn't really want this. So it's kind of a continuation of this theme of neighbors, how we interact with our neighbors. So um, if this interests you, um, mark your calendar for October 4th, also at 7 p.m. And now enjoy the movie. Thank you very much.